thank you so much. Um, it's definitely very exciting to be here and, and presenting today. Uh, my name is Andrew. I've been coding Go for nearly four years now, I think, and Fine has been my focus that whole time. So today, I wanted to show you how we can use the Fine toolkit to get up and running with an app and deliver it to the store in just seven minutes, although now that's six and a half. So uh, just wish me a little bit of luck. Uh, for anybody who hasn't heard of it, Fine is a graphical user interface toolkit for building platform agnostic applications. So applications that are written with Go and Fine will build and run on just about any graphical platform. I'll talk about the specifics a little bit further down. Um, and so these are going to work the same on, on every platform that you run them on, although they will adapt resolution and match light and dark modes uh, to the current theme and so forth. So it feels about right for the person running the application. And the Fine project aims to be the easiest way to get up and running in cross-platform application development. Um, it tries to be really easy to learn, and also it encourages your code also to be maintainable so other people can pick it up really easily. So first of all, I wanted to run a really quick setup. Now, I know most people will be familiar with this already, but right from the beginning, we want to create our project. Here, I'm calling it my project. I will go into that directory and run go mod init for my project. So now we're up and running with our Go project. We want to add fine as a dependency. So we run go get fine.io slash fine slash v2. That brings the latest version, which is part of the v2 um, group of versions, into your application. And really, that's all of the setup necessary. It does use some C behind those scenes. So if you haven't previously set that up, you might find that there's a, a dependency or two that you need to grab. Uh, there's more details on our website, but I won't go into the specifics just now. If you would like to test that your system is working with Fine, or if you'd like to explore what's available, you can run uh, the find.io slash find slash v2 slash cmd slash find underscore demo there, which will make sure that everything's working correctly, the window will appear, and it will show you all of the things that a fine application can do. So we're up and running. I think next we need our hello world. So here is a basic fine application, probably the simplest one. And for uh, anybody who's familiar with uh, Go application, it should look pretty straightforward. We have our main package. We're going to import the app and widget sub packages from fine. And we'll see how they're used. Inside the main function, first of all, we're creating a new application using app.new. Now that's going to do all of the system discovery, wiring up dependencies, and making sure that everything's going to run. And from that application, we create a new window. We've titled it hello. On some systems, this title will appear above your application. On, on others, like mobile devices, you may never see it, but it's good to give it a name. Then we give it some content. In this situation, we're just creating a new label from the standard widget package with hello fine as the content. And then we pass that into set content, so it's the main element of the window. And we tell the window to show and run, which is basically showing the window and then running the application. It's just a little shortcut. So when we run this code, you'll see this window in front of you, assuming that your current system is, is running in, in a dark theme. Probably no surprises there. Hello, fine prints to the window. That wasn't really the most exciting thing. So today I wanted to cover something a bit more. Let's make a markdown editor. In fact, the code isn't that much more complicated than our hello world. You'll see that we've included the container sub package as well. Let's see how that updates things. So our window this time is titled markdown editor. And the widgets that we're creating are a multi-line entry widget, which we're calling edit. This is where we will edit our markdown code. And we're also creating a rich text preview widget. We're using new rich text from Markdown. Of course, the Markdown here is empty because we're starting from, from no content, but you could pass it any Markdown document in there. The key part of the logic of this application is that we're telling the entry that when it's changed, it should pass the data through to the parse Markdown function of our preview widgets. And that's really it. Next, we're setting the content of our window and we're using an adaptive grid from the container package. And what this is doing is putting two items side by side, but when we rotate into a, a vertical context on a mobile app, for example, the grid will adapt to the size available. And we'll see that. And we pass it to the edit for the left or top and the preview for running next to it. And so we run that code 
And you can see here, we have a Markdown editor running on our desktop. We've got the content on the left that's currently being edited and a live preview on the right. That's pretty good. Now, we want to package it because a Go binary isn't really a full desktop application. We use the helpful Fine tool here, which you can get install with that command there. And using Fine Package, we build a graphical application, which can also be installed using Fine Install onto the current computer. We could also build for other systems, like using the Windows OS as a parameter. Or in fact, we could build for mobile devices, like um, our Android platform, where we need to give just a little bit more metadata. In fact, you could build for lots of different platforms. If you don't want to manage the tool chain, there's a Fine Cross binary that can help you with all of that. And here's a list of all of the platforms that we're currently supporting. Asterisk is a little bit of a work in progress, but it's all in our main repository. You can see here the different applications that have been packaged. We've got on the bottom left, Android. We could double click the app on our Android, Mac, or we could run the Windows. And this is it running in the iOS simulator or in landscape mode, as you can see there, if you've rotated your device. And to release, we're going to then use a similar command, passing in the credentials from the operating system that Apple might have issued us, or perhaps that we've obtained from. And so I can't go into the details of all of the platform specifics, but you can see there that that's how the helper command will get you through. Once these have been built, you basically just take that and do it like you would a normal native app. So we can drag the iOS IPA onto Apple's transporter app, or we can upload it into the website for Google Play or the Microsoft Store. And really, that's it. We've taken our first application all the way through to the App Store. There's so much more. I wish I could talk about data binding, file handling, standard dialogues, animations, and so forth. But there's just not time today. If you would like to know more, please join the fine channels on Slack or Discord. And if you would like to know even more, or you'd like support in, um, for your business or your project, do give us a shout at Fine Labs, and we'd love to help you out with your applications. I really enjoy the rest of the day. It's been great to join you today.